this video I will be showing you how to broadcast FM frequencies over your Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports. On this row, it is the fourth one. So on this first row, if I can get it focused, on this row, this first row that's closest to me, it's the fourth one that it will be broadcasting from. So one, two, three, four. So make sure you can touch a wire to that, just any basic wire, and it will act as an antenna and boost the broadcasting range. One thing that's important to have before you start doing this is to have an IP address for your Raspberry Pis. You, as you can see, I don't have a keyboard plugged into mine. It's only plugged into power and uh, ethernet to my Airport Express here. My Airport Express just gives it an IP address, which is important. So first of all, what you need to do is download the files. Um, am I not quick time? Pfft, what am I thinking? You need to use Pi FM. Hmm, what's up with my internet? Hold on. I'll just uh, let me just wait a second. Bear with me, please. I just need to turn on my uh, personal hotspot on my phone. This is being stupid. Well, anyway, you go to Pi FM. You just type in Pi FM. Maybe Hogwarts Great Great Hall Wi-Fi will work. Come on, connect. Good. Pi FM. Are you kidding? I can't stand this. What's wrong with this? Try to go wide. Good. Don't know what just happened, but I don't like it. So you just click here. I'll provide a link. I'll provide this same link in the description of the video. And you download the file. I've already downloaded it a couple times, obviously. Well, not obviously, because you maybe didn't look for it, but I did download it a couple times trying to get it to work. And so once you do that, you just unpack it copy the files to a flash drive and then put those onto your Raspberry Pi in a folder on your desktop or something. I called mine uh, Pi FM and it was directly located on the um, on the desktop. So once you do that you can open up your terminal. If you're SSHing into it you probably know what you're doing. If not I will post another video about how to SSH into your Raspberry Pi with a graphical user interface as well. So I'll show you both how to log in with, a, with uh, just command line, which is what I'm using right now, and how to use a graphical user interface or GUI. So SSH basics, because I don't have the commands memorized, and I don't really expect you to either. That's why I like graphical user interfaces, because they make everything so much easier for us. First of all, you need to find out your Raspberry Pi's IP address. You can do that with an app called Fing, F-I-N-G. It's available on the app, it's available on App Store and Google Play, or and on uh, whatever Windows equivalent is by Microsoft. So I've already found mine. So I'll just copy that in to he into my terminal. Paste need to reconnect to my SSH network because it has to be on the same network unless you've gotten a port mapped or something if you have a, a port forwarder application so now I'm in what you do now is if you have X quartz installed uh, you can well, first of all you have to install X quartz or if you have X11 on your Mac you can check by doing X11. And if there's a program that comes up, then you do. If there's not, then you don't. It's a white box with X11 in it. So you can install X Quartz. I'll provide a link to their website as well in the description. So when you do this, once you're logged in, you type LX session. You can't type start X because it doesn't work for some reason, but LX session does. And I'll let that start up. So once you do this, you copy all the stuff into the folder on your Raspberry Pi's desktop. 
open up a file manager and you make sure that they're all there so I have everything in there including a few other sounds that I installed into the folder so first of all you need to open up a terminal or if you've chosen not to use a graphical user interface because you know all the commands which I don't then you can just use the same terminal that you use to start this graphical interface so first you have to navigate to the directory the directory where your stuff's saved and then you type sudo because it needs root access because it directly accesses the memory of the Raspberry Pi period slash Pi FM, and then I'll just do sound.wav at 100.0. So I'll show you what this is. sudo basically just gives the program root access. Dot slash pi FM is the name of the program that'll run, and sound.wav is the sound file that's going to be broadcast, and then 100.0 is the FM frequency in megahertz that it'll be broadcasting at. So I have my radio over by my Raspberry Pi, which you probably already saw in the previous clip. And it's tuned to 100.0, and the antenna is very close to the graph, uh, I mean the general purpose input output pin. So I'll just hit enter. And there it goes. You may or may not be able to hear it. Probably are though. To cancel it, you do control C. And I will close that and show you how to download other sound files from your iTunes library, convert them using Audacity, and then put them in this folder. So you'll need another you'll need the same flash drive for this. What you do now is well, you can just go over to the terminal that you used, do com control C so that ceases the operation that's running. Open Audacity. and iTunes or wherever your sound files are stored, mine are in iTunes. Don't judge. Pfft. Mostly Beatles, of course. It's not opening. Don't judge my Latin either, okay? Latin's cool. So are bow ties. Bow ties are cool. So I'll just use, which one should I use? Mean Mr. Mustard by the Beatles. So first of all, you need to change the rate down to 11025, I believe, as well as go to tracks and change stereo to mono. So if your sound file comes out to be too high pitched, then you've made it you've made the frequency too low. And if it comes out to be too low and too slow, then you've made the frequency too high. So basically just play around until you find that right frequency. And then you do File, Export. Make sure it exports as .wav sign 16 bit PCM. Name it something simple like uh, mustard, because you'll have to type its name and you don't want to type in one one. And I don't know about spaces in the terminal, so. Save it copy it to your flash drive and then move it into that folder and then that's basically it so as you can see I have a ton of stuff saved in that folder and those are all of my files all my sound files that I've put in and I'll just show you how to run a different one. It's it, it, it's the exact same thing, you just type in a different name for this file. So, uh, cd slash home slash pi slash desktop slash pi fm. If you do and 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 then you type in sudo dot slash pi fm sound, actually I'll do uh, fool dot or cmoon, I like cmoon, it's a good song. So this first part here tells the computer to navigate to that directory. This here tells it that it has another step to perform. And then this command is what I showed you earlier. So I'll just hit enter. 
It's playing really fast because I, A, was too lazy to convert them to the proper frequency, and B, it doesn't matter. But if you want it, convert it. It's not a big deal. And it, if it's time consuming, just don't do it. Don't worry about it. But usually it comes out being too low and you have to do it. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching the video. I know it was a bit long, but it's probably worth it. Thanks again.